I want to, they invited me to speak on a subject specifically because their concern, their concern was that because of the time of COVID, that the church got hurt. Because they see that many people that used to come to church is no more coming. They experience that, that people that used to be strong in faith, lovers of God, is now falling away. And they are asking the question, why? And I can't so much of your for ochend hier staan in the self to say. Gister toe ek met Pastor Jan praat. And we have to be honest with ourselves too. That is still a concern in my heart. What happened to the church? Of ons nou wil weet of nie, of jy wil weet of nie, our concern is the kingdom of God needs to move forward progressively because God is a God that is not stagnant. God moves. And you know what's so amazing about the movement of God? That what was good in the 30s is no more good. Things changed. If you just take prayer, prayer changed. Worship changed. Everything changed. So ons moet ewers by die nieuwe trend van Godse beweging inval, so dat ons weet waar te ons gaan. En nou kom ons in a plek waar ons sien, what happened to the church? En nou begin ons rondkijk. A pastoor wat voor in a kerk staan, weet wat sien hy raak? Die, die, die leestoele. Is dit net ek? Per ty keer sê hy, Jy sien leestoele raak. En dan wonder jy, wat het van Piet geword? Piet het so mooi gestaan. Waar is Piet? En weet wat maak ons? Ons gaan daar in die stilte plek en ons sê, Heere, wat gaan jy aan? Waar is die foute? Begin by my. Is it ek? Het ek iets gedoen wat dit veroorzaak het? Wat gaan jy aan? What happened to the body of Christ? So die lekker vir ochend is and the thing that I'm gonna speak on is En jylle gaan my help. We're going to talk together. We're going to do this thing together. We're going to examine the state of the church in our current day. Waar is die kerk in dit nou? And we're going to do a spiritual x-ray on this. And we are not here to judge no, no, we're not here to judge. We're not here to, to point fingers at anybody. No, no, we're not going to do that. But we're going to look at the body of Christ from the standpoint of passion and love. From a standpoint of passion and love to see how we can, what we can do, how we can do it to raise the church to a higher spiritual dimension. covid for many people was a bad, bad thing. I'm telling you, COVID was the place where the body of Christ 
were supposed to draw so close to God that they could be steadfast, standvastig, so that niks hulle kon raak nie. But for many people, they, they displayed not that. COVID was, of die, die tydperk van, van isolatie, was een plek geweest van niks doen. En opvang op al die sheepies. Instead of catching up on that place of wedding on God. Because it touched everyone's life, mine too. It touched my life too. For the first time in my life, I had to stand in an empty church and preach. Nobody in church, and I had to preach. And I prophesied many times and said that even if my wife is the only one sitting there, I will still give my best, best, best. And she was. She was the operator of all the media things for me. And I ministered. And I wanted to make an altar call. And get a born again. No. <laughs> Sy is my liefie. Kan ek hier sê nou, ons het, ons het een dochterkie reiker geword. It's amazing. It's amazing. En ons dochter is vandag 33 jaar. Oud. You're looking very good for a grandmother. God got plans for us. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. She's my alles. Yeah, I like to live for. Looks cool. She's amazing. She's amazing. But we're going to do a spiritual x-ray on some things. We're going to examine. Because this is a mysterious thing. This is what happened to the church. The mystery behind Degeneration. A place of where things start to deteriorate. A place of decadence. All crazy words. But I'm going to explain as we go on. And then the restoration. Where does the restoration lies? Who can us it recht maak? To ons die liekie sing, to sê ek, laat ons het personalize. Persoonlik maak. Persoonlik maak. Let us not sing to the, to the global church. Let us not sing to the, to the family of church. I know that you, from here, when, when the, the, the people are addressed, it said family. And I understand that. But this morning I want to use Church. Because this is not church. This is just a building. This is church. We are the Ecclesia of God. So, what happened? How can this be, be restored? What does it take for a man to go down? For a man to deteriorate? For a man to decline so much in his spiritual walk. What happens that somebody that loved God passionately so much in what we can see? I haven't got a mask here now. I just want to borrow a mask. We had to wear this. For such a long time. And still we do. But if I take this off, there's still a mask. That needs to be taken off. So that the true you can be exposed. COVID exposed the true you. Times like this exposes the true us. Those that were strong 
that's no more in church. What happened? The prophet Ezekiel encountered a prophetic vision regarding the current state of the nation of Israel. And that same picture is applicable unto us in our day into the body of Christ. Because of this, ons is hier om uit te vind hoe gaan ons dit recht maak. Hoe gaan ons die kerk recht maak, terugbring waar hy was, of beter. Vir baie, sien ek en jy die ou wat langs ons is, het het destijds nie meer nie. En ons dink, hoe gaan ons dit recht maak? Hoe gaan ons hierdie ouwe approach? Hoe gaan ons by hierdie ouwe uitkom en hom kry weer om honger te word vir die Heere? I said, we are the church. So we start here. Starting place is here, not there. Yeah. Ek en jy moet hier begin. Hier binnenkant. You see, church, family, when a man is lost, when a man is lost and he's looking for direction and you walk up to somebody that's lost, that's looking for direction, the first question that you are supposed to ask him is not, where are you going? Because if he's lost, he must know where he is. God het vir Arm gevra, Arm, waar is jy? Waar is jy? The moment that we can know where you are, then we can help you from there to move on. Die oomblik wanneer jy kan sê, eerlijk sê, weet jy, vandag sit ek in een kerk, vandag is ek in een plek, maar ek is nie spiritually op die plek waar ek moet wees nie. Ek het my, gebeds, my gebedslewe achtergelaat. Ek het my verhouding met God achtergelaat. En jy sien ons probeer het opvang binnen worship. Because it's amazing, the worship is amazing. But the reason why I said let us personalize it because that what you are looking for is not there, it's in here. The God that we worship is not there. He's in here. So how do I get to Him in here? So we have to start looking at, not at, the, at, at, at John or Kuis or Piet or Gert or Sunny. Nee, ek moet na myself begin kyk en met myself eerlijk wees en vir myself sê, waar is ek? In hierdie, in hierdie journey. Want hoe gaan ek in hierdie journey? Want die oomlik, as ek eerlijk met myself is, dan kan ek help word. Dan kan ek help word. Then I can approach someone and say, listen, this is where I am. And I need to move forward and I don't know how to move forward. I need guidance. I need somebody to show me the way. I need somebody to help me. You have to identify the current state of your, where you are right now. You have to identify that. And only from there, you can be directed. So, I will graag hee, as moet jullie skrif lees, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 3, Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 3, and I lees it from the New King James Version. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, 
pastoor, leier, can these bones live? I'm used to seeing all, all the changes. I saw things happen in the realm of the Spirit. But God, you come to me with a question that's so difficult, and I've got no answer. I really don't know. And even as a prophet, I confess, only thou knowest. That's what Ezekiel said. The prophet of God. The man that, that's got an open communication, a man that hears God, a man that did miraculous things for his kingdom of God, a man that was used by God to do crazy things. And here he's in a place where he says, Oh God, as I go to the church, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'll work here. I'll work here in the so deadly. Al het hiermee gebruik met soveel plek in my leven. Nou vraag jy my, kan hierdie bene leven? And this powerful man says, only thou knowest. Baie pastore weet nie. Hulle is nie seker nie. Hulle is in een plek van, Heere, who know? So now the Bible starts to, des to describe unto us a state. Every bone in that valley was once a human based on the vision. Every bone. So the question now is to ask, is what happened to that human's? that they deteriorated so much to the point where they become dry bones. What happened? What happened? It's important. Because we need to understand why this degeneration happened. How come it happened? What it happened? How can it happen? What's the solution to this all? And Ezekiel was taken into this valley full of dry bones. And he came To understand what it means, bones, is for us to understand that it's, it's speaking of a structure. Sonder hierdie beenstruktuur kan hierdie, hierdie lichaam nie hier staan nie. Joseph comes and he prophesies. He says, he says to the Jews, to Israelites, when you leave Egypt, take my bones with you. And, and it was prophetically spoken. It was, it was, yes, they did took his bones with them, buried them somewhere else. But what he meant was, was the 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 structure, the spiritual structure that I started to build amongst you while you were in Egypt, that kept you standing while the famine was going on, while things was not looking the way it's supposed to. That structure, when you go, take that structure with you if I'm not there. There's a formula that I gave unto you and that formula made you to prevail even in Egypt, even in times of difficulties. The structure kept you standing. The structure, you can never prepare that structure and not include the presence of God. You can never bring a st that structure together and exclude the reverence of the presence of God. You can never do that. So the first thing that we see here is that God was not addressing life. God did not speak to 
the dry bones as life. He spoke to the structure. He spoke to the bones. Let's do something about the bones. So now we know that bone speaks of structure, but also bones referred to in the Bible as truth. Truth. Until the bones come together, there was no need for life. Throughout the Bible, God will send warnings to His people. He will, he will speak, and he, he, God's whole attempt throughout the Bible was to call the people back to their first love. Throughout the whole Bible, God's attempt was to replant into the hearts of the man the long-lost desire for the presence of God. But once again, you will find throughout Scripture, you will find that for some reason or another, there would always be a place or a system where harlotry, spiritual harlotry happened in the body of Christ or in the, in the, in the uh, history of the, of the Jews. Always. Where they would just deviate from what they know. The known patterns of God, they just escape that and they follow flesh. They follow the things that, that accompanies the lust of the world. And when it happens, every time when it happens, study it. You would see that God hands the people over to their enemies. Always. They hand them over to their enemies. I'm telling you this morning that this structure, this bone structure that is carrying this flesh, it speaks of a spiritual structure that can stand if it's, it's taken care of, if it's fed, if it's nurtured, if it's looked after. It can stand even in most difficult times, not just because it is a spiritual structure, but because of the truth that feeds the structure to make it strong. God hands over the people to their, to their enemies the moment that they leave the pathway of God. And what, 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 what does God do? He sends a prophet. He's not, send, he's not sending a teacher. He's not sending an apostle. He's not sending a, a, a shepherd. He sends a prophet. Why? Why a prophet? Because they would call, call them back to truth. Prophets always call the people back to truth. Because people fall in a decadence, in a place. Decadence, simply explained is, people fall in love with things outside of God. So you have to call them out of the decadence, out of that place where they self-righteously say that I'm okay. How are you doing, brother? I'm okay. I'm okay. Is jy rarig okay? Ek, ek is goed. Die Heere is vir my goed. And if you look into the spirit, dan sien jy, dit is nie boom in die baas. Daar word die kokkerot baas. And the moment that the prophet pitches up on the scene, most of the time, the people will heed to the warning. People will listen to the warning. And then God will bring those back to salvation and to restoration. So deviating from the plans of God and from God's authorized system is not something new. It's throughout history in the Bible. People that was once on fire for God. Tomorrow, the fire is gone. How? Who can bear it? I heard something that Pastor Jan said this morning, or somebody said that, that throughout the world, throughout the world, the church in its whole, the global church, 
is going through a very prophetic season of transition. Something has happened prophetically in the body of Christ. And we are not excluded from it. This nation of South Africa is not excluded from it. Although there's a lot of issues in the body of Christ. What's important is Jesus himself builds his church. And he said this. This is so amazing when Jesus said this. He said in Matthew 5 verse 13, he said, You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. Can you say for yourself, I'm salt? I give taste. Wow. I, as you rise, I flies and I stoom pots it. And you mark it gar. You may not have a stoom pots it. Pressure cook, you know. It's what the stoom pot is. Murdy stoom pots it. I flies a tie. No, that's a community stoom pots it. I'm, I'm busy getting prophetic here. You have to listen to what I'm saying. And you put that, that meat into the pressure cooker. And you know that you're going to cook this thing for two, three hours. You have to put the meat in the pressure cooker. Sometimes you need to get into Gethsemane. You need to get into the olive press. So that you can be pressed. Because olive oil that's called press is worth more. But nobody wants to be the olive. Nobody wants to go through that pressure. But the moment you get praised, and that olive oil comes through, and it's, gold, that's like, it's, like, it's like golden green, and it comes through, it gives taste to food. And we are the salt. So, as Danny said, when I put this in, I put it in like in And Jesus says, you are the salt. So, wherever you find yourself, you're supposed to season the atmosphere. Wherever you find yourself, you have to season that atmosphere so that that atmosphere can have taste. You have to come to that place understanding. You must weet, ek is die sout. Ek is sout. So die oomlik, wanneer ek na by jou kom, you will taste me. You will taste me. You will taste what I have. I've got something you need. And the moment you allow me to come close, I promise I will persevere you. I will make you tasty. What happened to the church? Locked up in the houses, distantiate themselves from the people because they're scared to get sick. Scared they got sick to get sick. While when you're the salt, you give. Oh, Salt, salt gee, um, salt gee waarde aan enige gerecht. Doesn't matter where you are. You give worth to any place you find yourself in. You have to understand that. You see, my, my buddy, my sister, niemand kan het vir jou leer nie. Niemand kan vir jou een kursus aanbied om dit verstaanbaar te maak nie. Jy moet het weet. Hy is in my. Jesus is in me. I'm in him. He is in me. We are one. I'm in him. Ja. Ja. I'm in him. He's in me. We are one. 
together we give taste. Ons maak dit wat nie goed broe nie. Lekker broe. The decadence of the world is a report that the church somewhere failed. Somewhere the church failed. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Dit is die licht van die wereld. Hy sê nie, hy is nie. Hy sê, jy is. Ek en jy is die licht van die wereld. The fact that there is darkness in the world is not because Eskom shut down the electricity. It's not their problem. The definition of darkness is not that there is no electricity. It's the church that is not visible. That's the definition of darkness. The church that's not visible in the world. Light always speaks of wisdom. The wisdom of God. Not the wisdom of this world, but the wisdom of God. That you and I as born again believers can use in this world that makes us different from other people. Matthew 5 verse 16 says, Let your light shine. Let your light shine. That word let means permit. Permit your light to shine. The choice is, the choice is ours. Hy kom nie, die Heere kom nie en hy sê, Jy sal jou licht laat sky nie. Hy sê, kies. Mak jy kiese. Choose. Permit your light to shine. Is hy skrif op die bord? Nie, is nie daar nie. Okay. Permit your light to shine. Waar sê hy? Before men. So when you are locked, locked down in your house, no light shines before no men. So if you, if you let your light shine before men, why? So that they can see your good works. And then say, that glorifies the Father. The taste that you and I give in the world through our appearance there and making Jesus greater, that makes our environment pleasant. It gives light to that environment. And through that works, God is glorified. Ek wil, ek, wil, ek wil my omstandighede, ek wil my environment verander. Jy kan jou environment verander. Hoe gaan het, hoe het gaan vandag by die werk? Wow, yes. Jy wil nie weet nie. Hel op aarde. Dit was die moeilikste dag van my leven gewees. Daai flippen ou, we choose. We choose. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna come into my environment. You'll be changed. You will be changed. You see, Jesus did something very spectacular here in Matthew 16. We all know the scripture so well. He starts doing a discussion amongst the people, amongst the the the, the, um, the disciples. And he's, he's, he, he comes to the disciples. The pastor comes to his leiderskap toe. Pastor Jan, he comes to his leiderskap toe. And he says to his leiderskap, What say the people? Who is I? Who does the people say I am? He asks this for his leiderskap sy disciples, en hier sê hulle, um, en hulle sê, some say, you are John the Baptist, hulle sê nie wie dit gesê nie, maar hulle sê net, some say you are John the Baptist, others say, 
that you are uh, um, Jeremiah. Others say that you are a prophet. And they think, oh, my glory, this identity crisis amongst the people. And what do they do? They turn their leaders up and they say, and who is you? That's me. And poof, they fall all in the ground. What do they do? We've been walking with him for three years. We've attended every service, morning and evening, and Wednesdays and Tuesdays and Thursdays. We've been there at every band practice. We've seen everything. We saw all miracles, all wonders, all signs happening. And now he's confronting us with a question, who do you, who do you say I am? And he's telling you, you're the ongelovige disciples. And they're like, I don't know. And one of them comes and Peter, he says, You, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Remember I said, we don't judge, we don't point fingers to nobody. We are busy scrutinizing. We are busy with the spiritual x-ray in our own hearts. We are looking at the church. And, and Jesus looks at him and he says to him, Simon, Peter, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And then Jesus said something. He said, upon this rock, from now on, your name is no more Simon, but you, you, we will be calling Peter. That means the rock, rock. And he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon what rock? Upon what rock does Jesus want to build the church? This church. Upon what rock? Upon the understanding of who he is. The church can never be built upon anything else if it's not the revelation of who he is. Who do they say I am? They did not know. So how can we build the church? Who can I myself than obo and Christus as I knew wie he is nie? Who is he? He's Jesus. He's the Christ. He's the Son of the Living God. As the vraag for ochen for me and for you, moet gevraag word dear Jesus. What can I can you say, my buddy, my sissy? Because the church gaan us om vertel wat ons van hom weet. Laat hy is dit, hy is dit, hy is dit. Of are we going to speak from a personal relationship? And tell him, you are my lover. I love you. You are, you are my breath. You're all I want. Nothing else. I cannot live without you. I don't want to. When we are together. I say, for a few months, my trip is real. I'm ten two years wat ek bezig is met hierdie hou, wat my, uit, wat my uitnooi Uganda toe. Ek weet nie waarom ek gaan nie, ek weet nie waar ek gaan bly nie, ek weet nie hoe ek gaan kom nie, ek weet nie waar ek jyn rei nie, ek weet nie wat ek gaan eet nie, ek weet nie waar ek gaan slaap nie, ek weet niks. Niks. Man wants to be so much in control. Man want to know exactly, I'm going to be in a five-star hotel, I'm going to drive with a limousine, I, I, I'm going to, 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 and then I'm just going to deliver something. And here I pitch up on Entebbe International, three o'clock in the morning. While I'm in the plane, I said, you know what, Holy Spirit, it's just you and me. The only person I know is you. I know nobody else. 
So I don't care where I'm going to stay. I don't care what I'm going to eat. I don't care. I've got you. I've got you alone. I said to Jesus, Jesus, the only thing I've got against this whole thing, the whole thing is, is that I had to pay for a flight and you go for free. <laughs> this is not going to work like this anymore. You, we have to speak about this. We have to make some changes here. I think you're going to pay for us both. Or we're going to go free both. <laughs> it's in your hand now. <laughs> That's my relationship. I can speak to him like that. You also. You also. He's a lover of my life. Wie is ek? Petrus sê, is die Messias, die Seen van die levende God, de Christus, die Christus. Ek dink het was vir Jesus so groot surprise gewees, vir hierdie ouwens wat nie weet wie hy is nie. You see, the proximity of Jesus doesn't mean it's a revelation. You can read your Bible, you can pray, you can attend church services, you can be involved in all activities there is. It does not necessarily mean that you've got an encounter with God. Peter alone spoke and he said, you are a, you are a Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, upon this revelation, only this revelation, nothing will work in your life. Nothing will work in your life. Nothing will work in your life. People fall away. People leave the faith because they haven't got that revelation of who Jesus is. What makes you stand there? What makes you strong in that position when things are falling apart? When things, businesses are falling apart, marriages, life, all the things, what makes you stand there? Only your relationship. The formula for building the church is Jesus. Jesus and Jesus alone, nothing else. You know what? After that, Jesus answered another thing he said, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against the church. Can I tell you something? We prophesy it, we speak it, we declare it in the name of Jesus. We say that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. And when you start looking into the church, to the church, and you look at the church, the church, and the church, and that church, and that church, and that church, and then you see, oh gosh. What happened to my declaration? Because hell is prevailing there and there and it's prevailing there. What now? You see, if the gates of hell seem to prevail effortlessly over the church, this church, we must go back and examine the spiritual architecture, the spiritual foundations, the, the, the bone structure, the truth structure. We have to go back to that and see what is, where is it? On what structure is this church built? On what truth? Somewhere, I've lost something. Because my life is a nightmare. Everything just goes wrong. Everything just goes wrong. Every time in the Bible when a nation or a, a territory was in a decadence, 
God first port of call. Every time that God pitches up on a, scenario, on a scene, he, he firstly, He goes to the, the church. He goes to the covenant people. He, he addresses the nation by addressing the church. God speaks to the church first. He's not going to the government. He's not going to the worldly systems. He comes straight to the church and he says, Church! Church! What's going on? What's going on, church? Haven't I gave you a mandate in the earth? And the, the mandate is dominion, ruling. And he asks us, what's going on? What's going on? Why is it that you have fallen away? What happened? And he comes to you and me with the same thing. And the world needs an explanation from the church. Why the church allowed darkness to come into the world while we are the light, while we are the salt? We do have the answers. Our president does not yet know that the answers is not in his cabinet. His answers is with spiritual leaders. His answer, is, his answer needs to come from God. Not from a worldly system. Ezekiel finds himself in this spot. There's once a great army, now just bones. And the interesting thing is, these bones were disjointed. The structures was disjointed. There was a skeleton, there was a femur, there was all these backbones, everything, it was scattered all over the show. But under a certain condition, all these things can come together again. They were scattered out of sight, but they were not scattered out of reach. And there was a condition that was initiated, and all these bones began to come alive. And at the end, there was an uh, amazing army standing. So, I said we need to be honest with ourselves. We need to know exactly where we are. Where do I stand? Where do I stand in this journey? Where do I stand in this journey with God? The only person that knows me better than me is me. The spirit of man knows the things of man. He knows you. Jy ken jouself better as iemand. Ek wil vir jou sê vandag, my boedie mys is, jy kan getrouwd wees. As jy dink, jou vrou ken jou better as jy, is nie so nie. We have to be honest with ourselves. You know, I, I met it, I met it out with myself. And if you, if you want to, if you want to take it this morning, you can take this. My name, unto my name, is attached nations. Unto my name is attached nations. And I cannot be, I cannot afford it to be dragged in and through a mud pool of circumstances and not find my way in at all to get up somewhere to stand up straight. Because there's nations that depends on me coming there because I've got something to release into their systems so that they can walk and work. 